Hey everyone, welcome back. Today what I wanted to do is make a walking bridge in Polybridge. I've been suggested to do this a few times and it sounded pretty fun, so yep. So like usual, I'm going to be starting this one in the sandbox. And I'm going to be combining the islands together, you see I'm doing that here. And I just do this so that none of the bridge pieces or cars are going to be able to fall into the water, which will be kind of annoying during testing. And now I just move those two fixed joints up and I'm going to be attaching three pieces of steel into a triangle shape like that. And you see, I sort of have this leg-like thing. Now I'm going to need to drive that somehow, and I'm going to do that with a custom shape. What I can do is by adding more points, you see right now I only have 5, so by adding 100, which I decided was too many, so I go down to 20, what I can do is drive it like a motor, and I can have that leg trace the outside of it, which will move it up and down. So you see here I'm doing that, I just had a fixed joint to the inside, and I'm using another fixed joint on the outside that the shape can attach to. So now by setting the motor setting so it can actually move, you see it goes, but very slowly goes. Now this is okay, I can just up the motor speed, you'll see I'll do that here, go from 2 to 200. And I don't know what these units even mean, I just know it's 100 times faster, which looks about right. So I think I lowered it a little bit, but otherwise kept it about the same. And now it's just time to actually attach the leg to the motor. So by just changing the geometry a bit, you can see it actually traced the outside. And this is exactly what I want, it's creating a kind of leg-like motion. So now what it's time to do is put four more joints 90 degrees apart from each other, which you see I'm doing here. What this will allow me to do is drive the three other legs slightly out of sync, so that they all create sort of a walking motion. You'll see how that works once I have all of them in place. Alright, now I'm connecting up that second leg now, and you see they actually move completely separate of each other. When the one leg is moving backwards, the other moves forwards. Now it's a little bit broken, because the one leg moves in very juddery motion, the one that's further forward. Which is actually an easy fix. All I have to do is connect them to the same fixed joint. So you see I'm going to do that here. But now I need to add in the two other legs, and I just have to do that here by connecting it to the other joint. And you see now it's creating some very strange movements. So now it's just time to add in that very last leg. And now when I play it, you see how they move. And it seems a bit confusing, and I was a little skeptical if it was going to work or not, but I decided to go ahead and switch my power source. Since the wheel itself, that fixed wheel I made, I can't move that around. I need the source of power that I can actually move around. I'm going to do that here at this Wheel of Roads. Now the Wheel of Roads themselves aren't going to be doing anything, but what I can do is drive it using a car on top, and I'm going to end up having a monster truck that spins the wheel for me. But I just need to build a little carriage area to hold it in. So I'm doing that here at these roads, and it's going to hold it in place, and now I'm adding in the monster truck. So he sits up there, and well, with a few issues happening, I decided to turn on Unbreakable temporarily. And it doesn't quite move, and it's because I connected some steel beams to the wrong spots. But this is actually pretty promising. So now I'm just tightening up the carriage a bit, getting it to work a bit better. And you see the movement's actually pretty solid. So the next step is really just to figure out a way to mount the legs to this entire mechanism. And I'm going to do that here with this weird diamond piece of steel. So now I'm just adding in that leg here. And I'm connecting it to the main wheel. Stretching it out a bit so that it'll actually drive properly. And you can see it's exactly like it was before. And that's exactly what we want, too. It should act the same exact way. So this is good, and I really didn't know what I was doing here. I just decided to have some fun with it, and I mirrored it and put it on the other side. This isn't productive in any way, it just looks kind of funny and decided to show it. They sort of just alternate. But we don't want that, so I'm going to do what I had before, and add another leg to the same exact fixed joint, but just connect it to a different part of the wheel. And you can see here, they're just moving in and out together. And this, I wasn't really sure if it was going to work, but I wanted to add in some feet. So I would need to mirror it to the front, and you'll see I'll do that here. I need to connect it up with some diamond pieces of steel. And I'm using some parallelograms just to keep them so that the legs, I mean the feet, are always parallel with the ground. And you can see as they move up and down here, it looks decently cool, but this is actually pretty discouraging because that wasn't even close to working. But it did give me an idea of a new design that I was actually very confident in. In fact, it, I was inspired by little walking toys. But the way these guys work is that they keep tracing the top half of a circle, and that's how they move forwards. You'll see what I mean later on of how this movement actually applies to this mechanism, but it's pretty neat. So here I'm connecting up another wheel with a 4 bar linkage that's exactly the same size as the main wheel. And you see, even as it swings back and forth, it still rotates the exact same way as the main wheel, which I find pretty cool. It's actually going to be very important later too, as the whole mechanism starts springing up and down, and as the geometry changes, it still needs to spin at a constant rate. So now what I wanted to do is add another... Well, I wanted to move that foot up and add another wheel in. And the reason I'm adding in this other wheel is to keep that foot always parallel with the ground, and these wheels are actually going to go together and they're going to follow the main wheel. And this might not look any better than before, in fact it might look worse because it looks less like a step, but the way it's going to trace, especially with this other wheel in place, 
you'll see how it moves it forward. So that was pretty solid and I thought it was probably about time to get this thing actually on the ground. So the first thing I did is redesign the feet. And I got rid of the fixed joints in the centers of those wheels so that they could actually fall down. The other thing I did is make a bunch of the um, joints split joints. And the reason I made them split joints is they have a really weird feature that they can fall through the ground as where regular joints can't. And by making them split joints, I'm guaranteeing the feet are the only things that are ever going to touch the ground. So I decided to change up the carriage a bit and see if I get some better grab on the main wheel. And it's not quite. So after increasing the horsepower of the truck quite a bit, I think I put it at 60 or 80 initially, and fixing the carriage so that it grabs the truck a bit tighter, and actually just redesigning the way it held it. So now what I can do is add in springs, and these springs are going to pull down on the truck and pull it against the wheel. Hopefully it'll be able to get some more friction, and it'll really be able to move the wheel when it's under a lot of load. So you see here, it almost gets it, and it actually does, it takes its first step. But it's not able to overcome it after this point. For some reason, these steps are different. I have no idea why one is different than the other. It should be the exact same load. It's not for some reason. But after adjusting some of the springs, I actually get some continuous movement out of it. And it's very close to working, but kind of had this funny thing where I'd like to fall over. Looks kind of cool, though. So now what I wanted to do is get the entire machine a little bit further off the ground, because it was a little bit close, and the way that the I had to clip in with the split joints, I just didn't like that. So I'm going to do that here with just really this weird box structure, and it ends up being, I guess you could consider it the legs, if the feet are the things in the bottom. And this gets it up uh, an extra two meters off the ground. So you see, I just gotta copy that to the top and bottom here. And it works in exactly the same way, except now it's just a little bit further up. And I was pretty happy with this, so I wanted to expand the testing area. I'm gonna do that with just putting a bunch of training pieces in between. I'm doing this for a couple reasons. The first one is once I turn on Unbreakable, I wanna make sure that I have enough room I can really test if this thing is gonna break randomly at any point. And the other reason is I want it to reverse at the end. And once I do that, I want a big enough space that it can reverse and it, it's not going to like just turn back immediately or something like that. So 100 meters seemed about right. And now I'm adding in the stop, I mean I'm adding in the reverse checkpoint here. So now when the truck reaches it, it should turn around and the entire machine should just work in the reverse. There really isn't anything that says it has to go in one direction. I'm not quite sure why this happened. I think I just didn't quite get enough compression down on the truck and it wasn't quite reaching the wheel. Maybe it clipped into one of the roads or something. Not too sure, but I go for two more legs, which is actually really easy to add in. So you see how the two squares with the legs were on before. So just adding on two more to the other two um, vertices there. It just works in reverse. And it's less resistance, it's much cleaner movement. I don't like having four legs, it's more of just a temporary solution to see if it would work. And so now I'm reinforcing the main wheel, I'm changing them from regular roads to reinforced roads. I'm adding in a bunch more springs, because now what it's time to do is get this thing to work on regular mode without unbreaking on. It seems like it's pretty easy, especially the way I'm going to show it, but it was just a lot of trial and error of which pieces needed to be springs, which pieces really didn't need to be springs. But you see, eventually here I got the feet to at least work, and they don't get super stressed. Now, what's really the problem is at the top here, the moment it starts going down, it would get to 100%, and I fixed that problem. And everything was good, except for that spring. So with just a few more pieces, and I'm going to like call this like maybe a backbone, this ended up basically fixing the problem. I needed to reinforce the backbone because it was still pretty weak, but th that was pretty much the last of the problems. But there's one more big thing here, and it's that the wheel still would get really stressed on one of the strokes. One, For some reason, when one of the feet would come up, not the other one, just one of them, it would super stress out the wheel. You see it's at 99%, and for like no reason. But the solution was, ended up being decently simple, it's just to lower that point as I showed there. And I have absolutely no reason, I have no idea why that works. It just does. But I do get to 99% stress, which is a little worrying, but... I mean, it wasn't 100, so it's basically a win, right? So now I'm just fixing it up so it's not getting to a 99% stress. I prefer something more in, like, the low 90s or 80s. So just by adding in two pieces of diamond steel to both sides, and that's what I was talking about, strengthening up the backbone. You see, it actually walks, and it never gets above, like, uh, I think it's 99%. Yeah, yeah, 99%. So, I'm turning off Unbreakable. Let's see if it works. You'll note that the entire thing slides back really far each step, which makes it pretty inefficient. It barely moves forward at all. The reason for this, I think, is just because of the way the springs work. As it starts pulling up, it lifts up on the springs and allows them to push backwards much more than before.
And you see here, it reaches the reverse checkpoint. And it actually does reverse. I didn't change anything since last time, so I guess the additional springs ended up helping. Kind of nice some problems just go away like that. But now it's time to return home. And you see here, it just takes a few more steps, and it's the flag. Now, this is another addition I added. I just added in the two extra feet, and this one moves way faster. But I don't know if I like it as much, because it doesn't look like it's stepping. It looks like it's sort of awkwardly rolling. Significantly faster, though. And you see this one also reaches the reverse point. And turns around like it should. So guys, thanks for watching. It walked. I mean, that was really the goal. If you like what you see, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more Polybridge 2 content, some other games stuff too. And yeah, until next time.